If you recall from the review of logarithms, if we want to take this exponential and we want to solve for x, we want to use something like a logarithm, either a natural log or in this case a common log. We'll take the common log of both sides, logarithms are exponents, so this x comes in front. So we have x times the log of 8 is equal to the log of 44. And what we did is we just took a function that originally was exponential, that function originally is exponential, but by taking the log of both sides, we make this into a linear function, almost like this, like 2 times x is equal to 10 or whatever. Uh, it's, it's a coefficient times x is equal to another number. So we've made it linear by using the inverse function, and that's the idea. So we're going to end up with a, uh, with a linear function. So, here's the goal. What we're doing is we're starting with a set of data that's curved. It's not linear. So what we'd ultimately like is, for example, some sort of an exponential function in the form y equals a times b raised to the x that would describe the relationship between x and y. It's not a linear function, it's an exponential function. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the long way home. We're going to say, well, let's straighten out the data. We're going to keep the x's alone, but because the y's are getting so big so fast, and because we expect the relationship to be exponential, how do we undo an exponential? Well, we take the log of it. But let's go ahead and take the natural log because it makes us feel better about ourselves. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the natural log of all the y's and we're going to replot the data. Now what that should do, uh, theoretically then, is to straighten out the data points. The y's get a lot smaller, so now we have a more linear relationship between x and the transformed y, and we can get this line of best fit. Now this line of best fit coming through here is going to be y hat equals b sub 0 plus b sub 1x, but hold the phone. It's not really relating x to y like this graph is, it's x to the natural log of y. So that regression line isn't predicting y, it's predicting the natural log of y. So here's what we're going to do, we're going to come full circle. We're going to say, well you know what, let's manipulate manipulate this equation so that it becomes exponential and it can map that thing right there. So what do we do to undo natural log and get y by itself, y hat by itself? We raise both sides as a power of e. These guys undo each other, we discussed why that was yesterday, and then what we're left with over here is e is raised to the sum of these two powers. When we're adding powers, we're really multiplying um, these powers together. So it's really e to the b0 times e to the b sub 1 uh, times x. And so what this really means is this is our coefficient a, so this guy is going to become a, e to the b sub 1 is going to be b, and it's going to get raised to the x power. So we will end up with an exponential function in that form there that fits the data the best and relates y to x. So it's a lot of fun. Again, let's see that again in instant replay. Take the original data, transform it to achieve linearity. A good transformation is this to the y's. Run a line of best fit through the transformed data. But the line of best fit isn't relating y to x, it's relating the natural log of y to x. Hey, let's undo natural log. Raise both sides as a power v. Ding! That brings us up to an exponential function, and that exponential function should fit the original data the best. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Okay, so check this out. What if we said, you know what? We were wrong. It's not exponential. It's really part of a quadratic, part of a parabola that's going through here. So instead of taking the natural log of y to straighten out the data, let's take the radical of y, the square root of y. So, we're going to relate x to the square root of y, and again, we're going to hope that those points are going to be straightened out, so that once again, we're going to get a line of best fit, and then we're going to say, oh, that line is in the form y hat equals b sub 0 plus b sub 1x, but hold the phone. That line's not relating y to x, it's relating the radical of y, the square root of y to x, so it's really relating this right here. Okay, now I know. Let's get y by itself. Let's undo the square root so that we can get y by itself. And in doing that, we're going to end up with an equation that will find y hat for us. So how do we undo this? 
Well, if we square this side, that'll undo that and leave us with that puppy. So then we got to square this side over here. Now there's two terms, that's a binomial squared. So what you get in descending order, let's do this guy squared first. It's going to give us b sub 1 squared x squared plus one of these guys times this and another one times this is going to be 2 times b sub 1, b sub 0 x and then plus a b sub 0 uh, squared. So it's plus b sub 0 squared. So woohoo! We're going to get a quadratic function that's going to describe y in terms of x and that's going to be this bad boy right here and whoop, we're going to get that. So again, we want full circle, not linear. Transformation to achieve linear. Line of best fit to go through that linear data. But then realize, how do we solve for y? Square it. That'll solve y in terms of x, but it'll be a quadratic which fits see, the original data the best. The most likely type of, oh, okay, never mind. Let's see how this works. Let's suppose that we are given a computer printout for the uh, transform data. So let's go back to that original problem where we said, you know what, let's do like the natural log of y um, on these guys. So we're going to do the natural log of y with x and we're going to straighten out the data. Once we straighten out the data, the line of best fit was this guy right here. So it was y hat is equal to uh, 1.2 plus 0.3x. But wait a minute. Once again, this line isn't going through x and y, this line is the linear regression line for x and natural log of y. So it's really natural log of y that we have here. So how are we going to undo the natural log of y to find the exponential model that fits that the best? We're going to raise both sides as a power of e. These guys will cancel each other, leaving us with y hat, and then this is going to be e to the 1.2 times e to the 0 0.3 raised to the x power. Then we're going to bust out our calculator and find e to the 1.2. So that's going to be y hat is equal e to the 1.2, which is 3.32. Then we're going to go do e to the 0.3, which is 1.35, and know that that is being raised to the x power. So there it is. There's the exponential model that fits the original data and relates y to x, y to x. This function related the natural log of y to x. That's how we use a transformation. Suppose instead we did that radical thing. Hey, how do we straighten out the data? Well, we took the square root of all the y's, and that's what straightened out the data. Then we have the line of best fit. Well, the line of best fit was this bad boy over here. And it was this line that said, hey, we got 1.2 plus 0 0.3 times x, but hold the phone. This didn't really relate x to, um, to y, it was really the square root of y, the radical of y. So how do we undo that? Well, we square both sides. So we go in here and square both sides, and that is how we're going to end up with y hat equals a uh, quadratic that's going to end up fitting this data the best. We just multiply these two binomials together and we got that. Okay, but here is those were a little bit more complicated than what you really tend to see on AP. We're going to do them anyway. This is more realistic. This is about as tough as it gets on an AP question. So let's take a moment to look at this and then we're done. So here it is. Suppose we have this computer printout, but it's not, it's again, it's not for X and Y, it's for transform data. And they're telling us that the transformation was the log of y. So what we should picture, even if they don't show it, is a scatter plot where it's x being related to the log of y and the data is fairly straight. And that's the line of best fit going through this data. So now it says, well, time t equals zero. This is like population of a place that's really growing fast. So t equals zero is going to be the year 2000. We want to estimate the actual population in 2008, not the log of the population in 2008. So here's what we're going to do. We don't have to go through all that crazy uh, stuff. Here's what we can do. We know that when we put this number, um, okay, we know that we get this least squares regression line, 3.1 plus 0 0.2 times x. Well, what we want to do is predict for the population in 2008. So if t equals 0 is 2000, then t equals 8 must be this, or x equals 8. So what we're going to do is we're going to put an 8 right here. Now, 8 times this is 1.6 plus 3.1 
is 4.7. So our predicted y, I'm sorry, the, so the predicted y uh, for this regression line, which is really the log of y, it's really the log of y hat that we're predicting is 4.7. That's our predicted y. But we're going to ultimately need the actual population in 2008. They'll give us a residual plot. And we see that in 2008 we had error. That was our predicted y, but the actual y was actually 0.2 above the predicted log of y. So then our actual y must be 0.2 higher, I'm sorry, our actual log of y must be 0.2 higher than the predicted log of y. So let's add a 0.2 to that bad boy. So what we have now is that our predicted log, our actual, I'm sorry, our actual log of y is the predicted plus the 0.2 residual, so it's 4.9. So in 2008, the log of the population was 4.9. All we need to do now is figure out what's the actual population. Well, how do you undo common log of y? You raise both sides as a power of 10. So all we need to do to get our final answer, let me pick a new, uh, new color here, let's go purple, <clears throat> okay? What we need to do to get our final answer is just this right here. Our y, our actual, um, our actual observed y is going to be 10 to the 4.9 power, which is 79,432.8. We'd round it off to 79,433. So that's how we're going to get the actual population from something like this. Like I said, this is about the most mathematical part of the AP Stat curriculum, and oftentimes it doesn't even get as complicated as this, but let's just make sure we're good to go uh, if we should ever encounter a problem like this.